thing or divide in groups? I will ask a question at that then. Find the victim. He just increased the will be at your choice, of course. No? Hmm? Maybe you can circulate that drink. The plastic can read. To create your appetite. Why don't you um, have Lick put it online for us and then we can just. Ah, maybe it's possible. Can you do that? I mean, not anymore. Can we put that online? Oh. Is that illegal? It's not legal. It's not legal. Oh, illegal, oh, illegal Smeagol. Come on. No, no, we can be sure then. <laughs> okay, good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray for justice, for peace. So many people suffer so much because of hatred. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, seat of wisdom, pray for us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Did everyone receive the two last chapter? I have one copy more, it's not normal, we have 23. So somebody, maybe in two days, will realize that he does not have. Do you have it? I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So this morning we continue to study emotion and feeling and passion. In fact, there is a, a title for covering all that. We can see that is affectivity. Huh? Affectivity. Affection. Huh? To affect. The word affect comes from ad, facere. I mean to, to do, to, to make, fachery, to make, add uh, for someone, in direction of someone, power, uh, add mean power in English. Okay. So affectivity, it is what is making you something, changing in you uh, something, affecting you. We say that in English, huh? that affect me, huh? that affected me. I was affected by that event, etc. So that is affectivity. Our emotion, our feeling, our passion, all that is affectivity. That means affect or change us, have an effect on us. We saw that, huh? The three components, remember the three components of every emotion. Huh? The first is the, to know, huh? The triangle, you remember? To know, awareness, huh? To know. The danger, to do the, the good, etc. Now, that awareness uh, provokes uh, a somatic change. Huh? Our body is affected, huh? affected body change. Huh? Uh, but why our body is changed? Because there is some good. There is a, uh, some good or some evil, some good to attain. And that what is provoking is provoking my appetite. Huh? So in every, in every uh, emotion, we have the three components. We must know if there is no good or no danger, no evil, there is no emotion. There is emotion when there is something attracting me, provoking in me some appetite for the good or some hatred for evil, you know, because they go together. Huh? I cannot like something and at the same time like what is opposed to that. Okay? And finally, the reaction, the consequence of that is in my body. Uh, but some change, something affects not only my appetite, affects my body. Now here, I will present you a, um, some motion of the concupiscible appetite. But that is not absolute. Huh? It's only to show to you uh, that um, emotion are linked with one another. Huh? For example, in regard of a good, huh? in regard of a good, a tower of good, because my appetite is tending tower of good. I, when I say tending tower of good, because I love that. Huh? I love that. So love, in fact, it is 
the tendency tower a uh, good love is a another is a word with a huge scope huh? from <laughs> lo, like to like ice cream <laughs> and to like and to love God huh? all that is love a tendency of the will of the appetite towards something no one the good is absent so what happened the good is not there think about Santa Claus when you were <coughs> six years old five years old huh? you were the the gift was not there, but you were desiring that. So to provoke a desire. Huh? A thirst for, a hunger. Huh? Hmm? Your mother say oh, today we eat a turkey. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the desire. The turkey is not there. But you know, the already you desire. And sometimes the desire, the joy to desire sometimes is as strong as the possession of the gift. <laughs> And we said that with children, and they, they dream about Christmas no? during uh, when I was young. And on, we have no television, but we have the radio. And at five in the afternoon, uh, every day during one month before Christmas, Santa Claus spoke on the radio. So all the children were listening. And Santa Claus gave some names of good children. They did well during the week, and they, uh, they can hope to have a gift. And when our name was named, we are so joyful. Hey, Santa Claus, give my name. But one my, no, my name was not given, but my sister, my sister, ha, 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 you know that. <laughs> <laughs> we desire that. Finally, we are Christmas. What we see sometimes, I see every, a few years ago, I was with my great nephew, and they receive a lot of gifts to them. Everybody gives. <laughs> and what did they play? They opened the boxes. And they look at the beautiful little car. <coughs> but after they play with the boxes themselves, they have fun with the boxes. <laughs> you know? So the desire sometimes, uh, we, we enjoy more to desire than to possess. Because, because when we possess, we say, oh, it's only that. <laughs> it is only that. You know? So desire. Now, if the good is present, and by what it is, it is the enjoyment. Huh? Enjoyment. Number 12, you remember that, huh? Enjoyment. Huh? We, we enjoy that. We desire that we process and we enjoy. We have, uh, <coughs> you, you prepare for your uh, graduation, huh? you desire your graduation, your, your, now you have the paper, it's written, huh? M.A., Uba, etc. And you have your cat, cat and gun, huh? <laughs> and now you say, ha. Huh? Ah, finally, I picture, picture, you know, to take the instant where you were enjoying your uh, victory over your ignorance. <laughs> because it's that, no? When you have a diploma, they need you fight, you fought to arrive to the truth. Huh? Now, if it is, at the same time, I cannot love something without, at the same time, hating the opposite. Love and hatred, they go together. I cannot love God, at the same time love the demon. <laughs> oh, no. I love God, I detest. I love God, I detest Satan. I love the good, I detest evil. You know? They go together. They are the two sides of the same reality. We cannot, at the same time, love one side and love the other side. We have to make a choice. Huh? It is principle of contradiction. Huh? We cannot have the same time love and not love the same thing on the same aspect. Huh? So the consequence of love is hatred. We cannot love so <laughs> without hatred. It's like a, you know, um, you have a, a coat. Huh? You have a coat. A coat is always one side beautiful, and the other is not beautiful. No, <laughs> it is the double. So we don't. But normally you don't. Walk, huh? I don't my coat. You don't. Walk on the street with the interior of your coat. Huh? Mm -hmm. So you don't want, because it's not that we like. You like what is on the other side. So we like the good, we detest evil. And if evil is absent, but this, it is, uh, um, <coughs> you, you, you know that is evil. Even there's that, but you know, you are not joyful. Mm -hmm. Evil should not create in you a joy should create in you sadness huh? or sorrow. Huh? And for example, uh, you know, 
that um, 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 okay. You go to the dentist. <laughs> okay. So when you are you don't like you, you don't like the, you're, 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 okay, we like the person of the dentist. You <laughs> don't like to go to the dentist. I don't know. I never met in my life one person say, Oh, it was so uh, it was so I enjoy I enjoy that. No, no. We don't like that. So when we are I say I am obliged to go to the dentist, I am obliged. We are not joyful, we are sad. You suffer, huh? Oh I have to I have to pass an examination. I want to have an A, but without passing an examination. You know? So the evil is that here. You are, you are in your, your room, you are not in the class here. Huh? You are not in front of the exam, but you know, uh, you know, it's difficult. I would prefer not to, etc. So in one that the evil is not present, we are sad. And when the evil is present, if we reject it. Normally, we should reject it. Huh? <coughs> uh, aversion. Huh? Aversion? Yes, aversion. So the rear ear enjoyment and the opposite is uh, river. Well, that is a kind of explanation because our affect, affect, affectivity, our uh, emotions are not pure emotion. We, don't, we cannot have a pure emotion. <coughs> For example, I have only to love, to love uh, God. Only to love God. I, only, only to love God. You, know, you, you cannot say that. Why? Because in the world there is other thing than God. There is some evil uh, injustice. So at the same time, you say, "I love God. I detest injustice." We cannot only pray to God. We have to do something. Jesus says, "Huh? We have to fight the evil." Okay. So every every affection we have is complex. Huh? Complex affection. Uh, uh, every emotion. Here, if, if that is concupiscible, the desire, a desiderative, we want to <coughs> obtain something, huh? some good. Here we want to fight. Uh, if I, ira, sib, ira means hell, anger. We, it is a combat. Huh? It is emotion attached to struggle. Huh? To struggle. So if the good is difficult, arduous, huh? it's not easy. For example, it is good for you to have a baccalaureate in uh, humanities or in theology or in philosophy or master. Oh, it's, a, it's a good, you know. But it's not easy. That takes one year, two years, three years, you know. A lot of papers, <laughs> a lot of games, <laughs> a lot of glue on your chair. <laughs> you know, it is difficult. But it is possible. So if it is possible, that you have hope. If you are in the class this morning, it is be because you are filled with hope. If we have no hope, you will not be here. No? Of course. If you don't hope to succeed, what are you doing here? You, be you come to class, you want to study, you make effort because you hope. It's the same for those who go to uh, uh, Olympic Games. Huh? Olympic Games. They go there, of course, for the trip, <laughs> but they, they, they work for two, three years, four years, every day, they, they swim, they, yeah, they, are, they run, etc. They hope. Hope is the mother. If we have no hope, we stop. When it is, there is no hope, there is despair, you have no hope. So it's important huh, to hope. The hope is a mother. If the good, suppose the good is impossible, but you despair, huh? despair. Then if you will say, I have nothing to do, I will never have that. Huh? So you stop, huh? you stop, you step on, I stop, I despair. Huh? Despair is the opposite of hope. That is when in regard of the good, but at the same time also we detest the evil. So we have to, if we have to fight an evil, it can be an armed <coughs> evil with a gun, it can be an enemy in politics, it can be the devil or temptation, etc. Huh? So if, when, the, the, when the evil is absent, we have some audacity. Because if we have no audacity, <coughs> we, not, we will not fight. 
The condition to fight it is to have some audacity, some courage, some strength, some fortitude. If you are here this morning because you are strong, you have a strong will to be here. Imagine you are committing for hours and hours and hours on your chair studying. What do you need? Not only really, you need an intellect, you need a strong will. You need audacity. Huh? You need audacity. <laughs> Courage. You say, I will face. Huh? I will face the difficulty. I will triumph. Huh? I will overcome. Hmm? We shall overcome. Huh? The, the sun, and we shall overcome. Huh? Okay? So it is <coughs> um, audacity. But it can be also another reaction. I, don't, I, did, I did not put here, but you have on the, on the other page. It can also escape, flee. And say, oh, I cannot. But suppose you want to, to attain the goal, but you need not only hope, you need also audacity. We cannot have hope without audacity. That means the virtue of hope with go with the uh, the strength, fortitude, huh? courage. You are here because you are courageous. Many people they say you're stupid to be here. We should be uh, uh, on the beach or elsewhere. <laughs> you are here to study, to be attentive, to work for three, four, five, six years. You know, to become a uh, a physician to become a scientist to become priest <coughs> to become to have diploma and we need and we need all the city courage fortitude no? and finally when the evil is present that we have a certain fear because even as are among you some soldier went to the combat nobody went to combat here in that class well, in the world of the class, they have some seminarium. They went to Iraq and they went to Afghanistan. And when they are at combat, they can be audacious, they can be strong, they cannot get off fear. Fear is normal. You can be courageous, but at the same time, you, you, you can think. But fear does not triumph over your audacity. In fact, a soldier fight courageously, but with fear. He does not want to be killed. No? Is a normal soldier going to combat, decide to be killed, maybe some, some uh, kabikaze uh, in Japan, or some uh, terrorist in, the, in the ISIS. Huh? But normally, a soldier want to come back living old. Huh? For the combat. So his hope is to come back. But he, can't, he is fighting courageously with fear. So fear is not opposed to courage. On the contrary, courage overcoming fear, uh, dominating fear, is a proof that it is a real courage. Because when the courage is not enough, what happens? We run up. We we, we escape, we avoid the difficulty. <coughs> Someone, huh, they avoid, the, they have some difficulty in their life and they have no the audacity to stop that. And the, the second year, it's possible linkage huh, between passion <coughs> and afterwards good can and help you to understand. It's not unique, there is not a unique model. Maybe there is 100,000 of possibility of combination. Here there is one. To, to see that all our emotions uh, are linked one with the other. So you have that, you can follow that. Huh? So we saw here, huh? love and hatred. Huh? So if we love the good, we desire the good, okay? And at the same time, uh, we detest the other, huh? aversion, okay? Now, if the obstacle is, is, not sur is surmountable, we hope. So we hope, if we are sure, we. We think I can win, I can <coughs> overcome, I can be the vic victorious about, uh, uh, about, uh, on that difficulty. If I am, oh, I say, no, it's impossible. I stop there. But you can apply that, for example. Suppose you want to buy a car. When you want to buy a car, 
in your ideal is to buy a, um, a, an Audi, an Audi, uh, Audi. Fifty-six, sixty thousand dollars. Okay, it, you you won't. But when you arrive, you deserve that. But you see, it is impossible because my wallet is very flat. Hmm? <laughs> it's empty. So we stop there. When it is possible, you continue to fight. Huh? But that is impossible. But you see, I cannot. Huh? Okay. So hope. And when we have hope, we cannot face the danger. We cannot, we can go continue. Huh? And finally, when we triumph, we attain, then we enjoy, we delight. But if we cannot, huh, then what happens? We despair, we fear because uh, we, we, we have a lack of courage. There is no anger. We don't face. There is no anger. And finally, we are sad, huh? sort of sad. So that is a kind of explanation of the linkage between, you can imagine other, other uh, way, huh? but our emotions are linked with, with another. Like our sensations are linked. In fact, we are one. And we are one. That is another proof of the unity of the human person. Huh? And many, many emotions can also arrive at the same time. At the same time, I am filled with hope, at the same time, I am filled with audacity, you know? The, the, you, not pure, a pure, pure emotion, like a pure sensation, is impossible. For example, it's impossible to have only a sensation of color. Be, because your, own, your other senses are also functioning at the same time, no? <laughs> no? You cannot only have a pure thought, a pure thought. When you think about something, immediately you think about other things. The proof of that, because when you think, you make judgment. If to make a judgment, you must think at least about <coughs> two things, a subject and a predicate, you know, okay? Now I go to <laughs> the cultivation of emotion. Uh, what I just start with you is to, to help you to understand the complexity of the human person. Huh? <coughs> It, you know, sometimes we, we want to, to talk with somebody, that person is very sad, is very anxious, etc. And we try to help that person, but sometimes we have difficulty because his anxiety or, his, or her anxiety is linked with other emotions. So and sometimes we, want, we think we will please someone to saying something and the person reacts in the opposite way. Huh? You say, oh, hey, you are a nice suit this morning, nice dress. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That, that happened, you know? That happened. You have the impression when you say that is to mock her or to mock him. No. You know? Sometimes because other, at the same time that person has other emotion, huh? other thinking, other way of thinking. So, um, number four, the cultivation of emotion. <coughs> you remember, I, I, tell, I told you last class that we, we like so much emotion, people, men, women, huh? and like they pay to have emotion. You pay, you go to the movie to, to see a, a movie, and that movie with me will give you, and you will be horrified. Ooh, you share in the horror of the, especially the Halloween is coming, a huh? lot of vampires. You know? Or you go to a movie to cry. You cry because of, it's so sad. And people, they cry. And when they, are, they, they go out of the theater, all their eyes are red. You know? And they pay $10 for that, to cry. <laughs> they should use onions. <laughs> What, what is that? The, that proof we need emotion. It is a need <coughs> for us to have emotion. It is normal, it is a need. Okay? So we have to control that, we have to cultivate that. It is a large part of human activity. Look at your day, for example. In one day, how many emotions you have during the day? 
try to, to, to write that on the paper. Emotion when we wake up. Oh, beautiful sun. Oh, it's raining today, you know? Mm -hmm. After that, you go, oh, it's cold. Oh, and what and yeah, we say, oh, <coughs> oh no, I should stay in my life. You know? Oh, I am afraid today. I have a, I have a game with Father Michel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Emotion, it is continually we have emotion. So we cannot live without that. But we can, we have to know them and to control them and to use them to improve our relation mm. with others, for example. Okay? So uh, the, the range of, uh, of emotion on man is almost illimited. Why? Because his knowledge is illimited and his appetite is illimited. So we can have a lot, a lot, a lot of emotions, no? different emotions. And everyone has not exactly the same emotion as another. I'm sure of that. Suppose I bring e e a beautiful flower. Will everyone have the same emotion? Have the same emotion? No. Someone will say, oh, beautiful. Some will say, it's a waste of money. Mm -hmm. huh? Waste of money. Oh, they killed the flower. <laughs> <laughs> they murder, <laughs> they murder. We, in every, you know, in front of everything. Huh? Everything, okay? Um, but animal, contrary to us, they have emotion. Right? Your cat, your dog have emotion. But they don't have emotion the same way you have. What is the main difference between the emotion of your cat in front, for example, in front of a good meal or, 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 or beautiful mouse, and you in front of a turkey on Thanksgiving? What is the big difference? You know. You know. You can reflect on that. Yeah. Not only you and en you enjoy, you have an emotion, but you know. Uh, and you can control your emotion. For example, you are inclining to laugh, but you refrain laughing. Mm -hmm. uh, laughing sorry, sometimes. Huh? You, <laughs> you're in the mass, something happened to make you laugh, but you say, no, it's not time to laugh in the chapel. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you keep that in yourself. Huh? Your cat cannot. Your dog cannot. If you see good meal, huh? Your dog would wag his tail and say, hey, very happy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Huh? And he would absorb that in a few seconds. But you, you take your time to eat your turkey on Thanksgiving. Huh? So that you, our emotions are always linked with our intellect, our <coughs> will also. Another proof <coughs> that we are one. You know, one of the central problems in here, it is this the unity of the human person. Because some philosophers deny the unity of the human person. I spoke about Descartes, for example. Or someone, they, they don't recognize the other thing than material reality, that uh, it is only a biological fact, you know? It's only here, goose pump. We don't see about the link uh, uh, with the, uh, between the emotion and the intellect and the will. In fact, my emotions are never pure emotion. They are linked with my intellect. I know. And my will also, I can, I can make, suppose I have an emotion, desiring something, and well, I pass in front of the Dairy Queen. You know, that is very innocent. I could, I can, could, I can take other examples. But, and I have an emotion, a desire. What happened? First, you know, you desire. You know there is a good for you, but you can say yes, you can say no. So we have the master of that emotion. Of course, we, we cannot control totally our own emotion, but we have a, a certain control over them. Okay. Remember when a boy, not for girl, boy, when you were young, what your father said, a boy does not, does not cry, stop crying. Mm -hmm. And you stop crying because you were a man. No? no? Think about that. that. Already you were able to control your emotion. Huh? Emotion. Okay. So the difference, because we have intellective awareness and we have our free will. Another thing also, we have the language. And the language is a large part in our emotion. The language is 
one the factor of our emotion. Many emotions we have are caused by language. By you know something, somebody tell you something, and immediately that provoke in you uh, not only an intellectual knowledge, but also an affection. Suppose you are very quiet in your room, you, and your telephone ring. You say, hey, I have a good news to you. Yeah, what? You won a $5,000 at the lottery and... Uh, ah! Huh? So the, the, the words, only the word you won, $5,000, make you happy. You can and you say you are stupid. Suppose your superior said, yeah, yeah, you are stupid, man. You're stupid. You will, all, all your life you'll be stupid. <coughs> what emotions will you have? The problem you see, anger, huh? Anger. You, you, our word, we cannot go out of a conversation the same way because conversation provokes in us some emotion. <coughs> I'm sure you cannot get, go out from this class the same because what I tell you provokes emotion. If there is no emotion attached to what I tell you, you are a robot. If you are not a robot, for example, I, I tell you, uh, don't cry. Remember, I was five years old, your father said, stop crying, a man does not cry. That is for girl, not for men. <laughs> that provokes emotion in you. When you remember that, you have some emotion. Of course, you don't cry, but something is affecting you. Affecting, affectivity, huh? affecting. Every message, you read, for example, the newspaper, they say, ISIS killed Christian. Immediately, you have an emotion. You cannot only intellectually know, know that uh, they killed. No, your heart, your emotion are accompanying all, time, all the time the message you receive, the sensation you receive. Okay? Um, even touch alone can provoke emotion. Only to think can provoke emotion. For example, you make a, you, you, are a, you are in mathematics, huh? the teacher gives you a problem, and you find the solution, and you are joyful, you are happy. What makes you happy? Intellectual reasoning. Because you reason correctly, in your body you express that through a smile, through a satisfaction. That is a good proof that our mind can have influence on my body. There's an intimate union between my mind and my body. Huh? <coughs> okay, you can read that. And next page, page 16. Um, <coughs> so we saw the man, we can reflect on our emotion. The big difference. We can analyze our emotion. We can judge our emotion. We can find that some emotions are good, some emotions are mm -hmm. not good. You know that, because some emotion is the object of my emotion is immoral, is not moral. But you say that for me, huh? you know? <coughs> Some people, they have emotion when they go to a, uh, they use a pornography site. They have emotion. But you know that emotion is, I should not, <laughs> I should not, I should have another kind of emotion. In that. You can have emotion, uh, you, can, you can judge your emotion. And because your emotion have an, have an ethical dimension. Your emotion has ethical, they are not like your dog. Your dog has no responsibility. You can have some responsibility. You know, there is two commandments of God about that. What are the two commandments of God about the control of our emotion? The nine and the ten. What is the nine? You not convert the wife of your neighbor. The need you can have the idea, and you can have an emotion. You can, you, and not every emotion is good, depending on the object of the emotion. So emotions are also linked with ethics. And the nine, you cannot convert the good of your neighbor. Okay, etc. So we spoke about the reflective ability. Another 4.3. <laughs> Through the power of intellective memory, man can recall emotion of the past. So not only we have emotion now, but we can have emotion from the past. Exactly the case I gave you, I, I, I provoked in you a few, a few minutes ago. 
When I say, remember when you was a little boy and you were crying and your father say, you know, that is in the past. Re remember, and even, for example, you saw your mother die or you saw your, <coughs> your poor little cat huh, die. My cat is dead. I remember when I was young, one of my friends, he found in his uh, courtyard a bird. The bird was dead. And he took the bird, he was very sad because the bird was dead. Today, when I hear my dad, I'm not joyful. I said, ha, 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 it's funny, you huh? know. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot say that. Okay, when I, I remember that, I see my friend, huh? he was about maybe seven, eight years old, with the bird in his hand, he was sad. And today, when I see that, I'm not joyful, I am sad. When you, remain, when you remember happy even, you are happy. When you remember sad even, you are sad. That means uh, even we can, through our memory, renew, re uh, live again our emotion. For example, you see a, a beautiful movie. Well, I think that the movie I saw maybe 50 years ago, 40. The, um, Sound of Music, you know? You saw that, Sound of Music? Oh, it's beautiful. You see all the children in the mountain, huh? and they say, today I think about that, I am joyful, it's, 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 it's still beautiful. And the beauty of the past is continue to influence my emotion today, okay? That is important, you know, in education. Imagine a child at the age of five as Painful emotion. He sees, for example, he sees his father beating his mother. When he, he recalled that, he, he reminded that in the, remember that in the future, he will be sad. And it is so important that sometimes a, a, a child becoming an adult will be affected all his life by that. It, it is very important not to frighten children. Not to create truth, because it is for the rest of their life. For example, suppose a little child, two years old, is suddenly in front of a huge dog, and the dog is menacing it in huh, earth. It's for a doberman. What happened for the rest of his life, of her life? She will be afraid of every dog. Every time that person will see that a dog, she will be afraid. Okay? Because she was, we see that next class, we call that the unconscious. In fact, the unconscious is made with our emotions that are kept in, uh, in us, but they are moving. Because emotions are motors. They provoke something in us. No? Okay? Um, <coughs> now, number five. The human is able to view any emotional experience as a value <coughs> and desi desire it. We saw that. Huh? We, 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 not only we have emotion, but we desire to have beautiful emotion. We go to a concert. Why do you go to a concert? To have emotion. Why do you go to a museum? To have emotion. Think about that. You go to a movie. Why do you go to a movie? Because the desire to have emotion. You read a novel. Why do you read a novel? Because something provoking you an emotion. Okay. So because uh, <coughs> to bring the past and the present and stand before oneself, reflective self-consciousness. That means we have the power as a human being to live in the present, but also to make the, pr the past present. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge power. We can take the past and live that now. And somebody, we are not able to get rid of something of the past, they always continue to suffer. For example, somebody was frustrated, was uh, hurt by someone, every time. Now today, when he meets that person, he feels the same emotion. No? Okay. Uh, go to fine arts. So, because we have that desire to uh, enjoy emotion, uh, it's a need for us, we have, we call the fine art. The art is, in fact, the, the way we provoke beautiful, happy, joyful emotion. We need that. 
We need emotion. It is true for liturgy, for example. We cannot pray only with our mind. It was, I think, the big mistake of the Jansenism and, and the Albi, uh, the, 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 the those from Alpi in France. Huh? They think that well, what is the body, everything is bad. Only the pure thought is pure. No, we are not angels, we are men, and we have to do, to do what is, they said in the song. It is, it is said in the song, clap hands, cry, dance, joy. No. Clap and sing with joy. No. Look at the song. Huh? The, the body is participating to the joy of the soul. Huh? Uh, another thing also, <coughs> arts are like a mirror. The arts reflect who we are. In fact, if the artist put into the art his own reality, his own feeling, his own emotion. And the art <coughs> is a way to know who is man, who is the woman. In fact, when you want to study uh, a, a part of history, uh, you go to the art. You go, for example, you want to study a Renaissance, then you go to painting, you go to music, you go to uh, novel, to writing of that period. Because to, the artist express the reality. He embellishes the reality, but he, ex embellishes the reality, but he express the reality. Huh? The tragic of the human life. It, it, that is a kind of philosophy, but it's not Systematic. In fact, the, uh, the, the artist is like a philosopher. He is reflecting on the reality of the life, but not with the same tools. Huh? The, the philosopher is systematic. He plays on ideas. The artist is play. He plays on emotion. On emotion. Okay? The the goal of an artist is not to say that is true. It is to say that is beautiful that is pleasant, that is attracting, okay? Ne ne page 18. Um, <laughs> so because of, huh, man is an anxious animal, aware of his nothingness and finitude. Huh? So why? Because man knows his destiny. He knows his suffering. And the art is a way to express the suffering of man, the joy of man. Huh? In fact, in art, we find all, all the, the dimension of the human being. Is the reason why it's important in every language to study literature. Literature is not a waste of time. Literature is the way to understand the nature, of the heart of human, of, the, of, of man, especially that anxiety in front of his destiny, huh? the destiny of man. Think about the, the plays of Shakespeare in, in France, in, in Corneille, for example. Huh? They, they speak about the essential of life, the destiny of life, the meaning of life. So that is uh, important to have. When you study humanities, you study literature. It's not for a waste of time. It's to know who you are. Through literature, we know who we are but not the same way as we do now in philosophy. But it is important because we are not only pure thought, we are also body, huh? okay? Man, number seven, is never in total repose. Huh? Man is always in tension between the past and the future. We have no choice. We have to prepare the future. If we don't prepare the future, what will happen? We will die. Huh? So our emotions are not only about the present, are not only about the past, they are also about the future. For example, among a young man, a young woman, they want to, to marry, to create a family. Their emotions are tending toward the future. You are here, mm. and your emotions are not only for the past. Oh, when I was in the first grade, the little garden, we learned how to count one, two, three, four. No, you think here about the future. We, and th there is emotion attached to the future. In the most, it is the desire. Huh? The desire. And that desire, that hope, 
is sustaining you in your action. Okay? So art, <coughs> the expression of emotion is very, very important. But page 19, <laughs> if emotion are a reality in our lives, we have to live that, to be aware of that. We are really aware. And when you make an examination of conscience, it is a part of my exam how I react in front of, it is my emotion in front of a thing. Huh? How do I react in, in regard of a person, for example? So we are intelligent. And because we are intelligent, not only we, are, we know we have emotion, but we can appreciate our emotion. We can judge our emotion. And because we can judge our emotion, we can find the value in them. We can say that is a good emotion, that is not a good emotion. Here I am losing my control. Here I am, uh, I am not totally free. I am the slave of my emotion. So I must develop the control of my emotion. You know, we are at the same time filled with emotion, but we have the power to go to transcend our emotion because we are intelligent. So we must control them. We must channel them, not only control. Control does not mean stop. Uh, when you control your car, that means you, you stop your car. No, to control your car, it is to make your car go in the right direction. Right? You channel all your energy to go in security at a good speed. It's the same for emotion. Emotion are not to be destroyed. They are to be controlled. In fact, if you look at the history of the humanity, who did great things? Those who were passionate. Those who were of great emotion. They did great things. Because to, to, to accomplish a great, a great uh, and we must be filled with audacity. We must be filled with, so emotions are important. Uh, are important. But we have to, uh, to, uh, to make a, to, to control not emotion first, but the object of our emotion. And how we control the object of my emotion? By controlling our knowledge. Uh, we have emotion because we attain an object. Well, I give you a simple example. <laughs> um, somebody has a tendency to drink beer, for example. Drink beer. It's, it's not a sin to drink beer, but to drink too many beer can be a problem. <laughs> so uh, he passed in front of a tavern or a, a bistro in France. Huh? You see, Stella uh, Artois, no, not Stella Maris, <laughs> Stella, la via Stella, or Heineken, huh? I say, or Guinness. That is knowledge. If he says, when I see that, that advertising, I see that bar, that restaurant, that salon, I enter automatically, what do you have to do? You have to say, I will change the object of my knowledge. I will pass by another street where there is no bar, there is no restaurant. So I can, if I control the object of my emotion, I would change the emotion. If, we, if suppose you detest something, but finally you discover that that thing is not so bad, it is even good for your health. For example, when you were young, you did not like a veal. Huh? veal. I remember when I was teaching the uh, seventh grade in Montreal, uh, a dentist came at the school. He said to the children, you have to eat well, and you have to eat veal. And the children automatically, wash. <laughs> You know, but that they were they were at that time uh, ten years old. Huh? But when they become adult, and they say to their child, "Eat veal, because veal is good for health." You know, so the same object can, you know, can be modified, modify your uh, your way of uh, your way of uh, having really emotion in regard of that. Hmm? Well, I can see only in my case personally. Huh? When I was a young student, uh, 17, 18, 19, philosophy for, my, for, for me was a loss of time. It was, a, it was babbling, it was, 
I did not like that. I am frank. Huh? I passed my examination. And I was passionate for science. And my superior said, go and study philosophy. And now I like philosophy. No. <laughs> yes. I, am, I did for 52 years now. <laughs> <laughs> so that means the end object, huh? we change our emotion, we, we change the object of our emotion. I give you an example. Suppose um, you are in love, no, not you, but suppose a, a young yeah. man is not in love with a, <laughs> a, uh, they, have a, uh, they have a college and they, you know, he thinks of the future and he, he fell in love with a beautiful girl, intelligent, uh, good Catholic, uh, all the virtues. Uh. <laughs> so he takes a picture with his eye. Uh, <laughs> and he, if not the picture, he put that on this computer, just for the computer. And every time he wants to study, he think about mm, mm, uh. well, if that picture makes him too ill, uh, he is, have too much emotion, so, uh, so powerful emotion, he cannot study logic. What he has to do? He said, excuse me, I will put you in my drawer. <laughs> 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 yes, because uh, emotions are provoked by an object, no? So if you keep the same object or another thing, suppose you detest someone, huh? you put the picture of a picture, uh, or put the, on the wall, you, you send it. <laughs> da, mm. Of course, the more you see it, him, the more you detest him. <laughs> so if you want to say, oh, no, no, I am a Christian, I have to forgive, then you have to put that in your drawer huh? <laughs> and forget. Oh, that is, temptation is there. Huh? When we say avoid occasion of temptation, is that there? Because the occasion of temptation provoke emotion, desire. So we have the control, not of our emotions directly, that the control of the object of our emotion. We can channel our emotion also, mm -hmm. no? for the good. Saint, uh, <laughs> look at, for example, um, Saint uh, Vincent de Paul. All those who work for the poor, Teresa Calcutta, Saint Teresa, they, they were passionate, passionate. They have a great emotion for the poor. No? But they canalize that. Saint, what is interesting in the life of Saint Vincent de Paul? Saint Vincent de Paul was a young priest. He was preoccupied by money. Yes, it's a fact. In his life, it was because he had to, to help his family. They were poor. As a priest, yeah, he was pre he received a he received a, a, leg, a, leg, a leg, legation a, a inheritance from a, a woman in Marseille. So he went by horse probably to Marseille, and when he received the the gift, he took the, the ship because he said, no, I have money, I can buy a, a cruise. Huh? So he went on the cruise. But what happened? The Muslim <laughs> took him, and for one year he was slave and slave in Turkey. Too. He was freed after because they paid for him. And after that, the same, the same man, Vincent de Paul, who was at emotion in front of money, he was after that a emotion in front of the poor. He, poor. he passed his life with the poor. You know, we can change our emotion. If we change the control of the object of our emotion, we change our emotion. So we cannot say, I am the slave of my emotion. If you are the slave, you have a, like a drug addict, huh? a porno <laughs> addict. You have to change the, the object. If you change the object, you change the emotion you are. No? And it is important, why? Because the emotion will lead, lead you to action. Our emotion leads us to action also. So if we control the object, if we control the emotion, we control our emotion, uh, action. In fact, emotions are moral or immoral if we accept them or not. When a man is in love with uh, another woman that is wife, he has emotion with her, but he accepts that. So that emotion is immoral. That love is immoral. Huh? Okay. Next page, <coughs> controlling emotion. Huh? Uh, the intellectualization of emotion. I go just 3.2. Uh, uh, you know, the emotion must be intellectualized. That does not mean it should be suppressed. When, when we use our intellect to analyze, to, co 
control our emotion, we don't suppress that. Uh, you remember the, the movie Babbitt's Feast, huh? They want to suppress their emotion. We cannot suppress our emotion. It's impossible. You cannot suppress that. But we have control of that. Control that. We have to put order and harmony huh, in our emotion. And that is important for the integral development of your own personality. A person who is balanced, huh, equilibrium, huh, a good equilibrium, balance, is a person who can control his or her emotion. They have emotion. For example, the Pope Francis is filled with emotion. It's not, not a block of ice. Huh? He has emotion, but he controls that. We must have emotion. If we have a human, we cannot be a human person without emotion. But to be a, a person well balanced, it must control. Suppose I cry for anything. I cry for anything. Something is not normal. Okay, a baby, a young baby, cries every time he has a little contradiction, he cries. Huh? You remember that when you were five years old? And your mother said, don't do, no, 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 no chocolate tonight, no chocolate, oh, no, no. you cry. But if suppose you are 25 years old and the same thing, a little, 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 uh, contrariety, you cry. That means you are not an answer, you are a baby. And that, that person must control her or his, uh, his uh, emotion. It's a part of the formation of the human person. We see that soon when we study the human person. Uh, to be balanced, that means to be able to use, to control, to channel uh, that power we have uh, to have emotion. It's, it, is a, it is a power, don't forget. Uh, irascible and concupiscible are powers. Appetite, they are powers. Uh, what is a power is something making you act. In fact, your emotion makes you do something. Is there a reason why when you do something with emotion, you do that better? Suppose you have to prepare a, a bank. Uh, your superior asks you, sister, <coughs> uh, we received the visit of the bishop. I ask you to prepare a, a good, good meal, you know? I don't, I don't like that bishop. I don't like him. <laughs> oh, but I, I have no time. I have no time. Oh, okay, I will do that, I will do that, but you know, I don't, I don't like that. With your meal, with your banquet, well, as well as you see, oh, I, I am very happy. If we look, if we do something with passion, with emotion, we are more <coughs> efficient. More efficient. Emotion are, a, you have to teach, suppose your superior asks you, okay, I ask you to teach, uh, to teach, uh, Catechism in the 10th grade. Oh, 10th grade. I don't like that. Those boys, they are so sloppy. I don't like that. But if, of course, you would teach, and you would say the sister or the priest does, does not like us. But if you arrive and you are joyful and you teach with enthusiasm, <sighs> only that, the way you teach, the way you preach, the way you contact a person, immediately change the religion. Suppose the morning you meet me. Good morning, Father. <laughs> or oh, I meet my superior. No. Say, good morning, Father. Good morning. <laughs> no, emotion is very important. You meet someone for the first time. If you meet him with fear, with reluctance, then the relation will be broken. If you meet with confidence, with joy, oh, I'm very happy, nice to meet you. Even if you are not very interested, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, as a priest, as a teacher, they will come, Father, I want to meet you, I, I, I have a problem. Oh, okay, welcome, come, come. And in fact, you say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Control your emotion. Very important. Control it. You cannot express everything you feel. No? You meet someone, uh, uh, you can smell the odor of holiness at three feet. Huh? <laughs> and you say, oh, uh, you know, because you will have to work with poor people. 
people, they don't have money to, to buy soap and to take a shower. And you are that pastor. You know the sister who work with uh, Sister uh, uh, Calcutta, with Sister, you know, when they, they take care of the poor, they must have a great, and they manifest joy with something, you know. Hmm? That, that is the control of our own emotion. It's not to suppress emotion, we have to control that. <laughs> and you have a person when you can control, you can, you don't see everything you feel, <coughs> but you can express what is, you know, it is a question of judgment, huh? good judgment, okay? Uh, the emotion, I'll see page uh, uh, 20, huh? uh, the function of, of attention, the concentration, huh? the necessity, in fact, um, to be efficient, even for our, uh, our um, emotion, we must concentrate. If I am, for example, you listen to music. If you want to enjoy a concert, you go to, you pay $40 for a concert. You sit down in, in, the, in, the, in the theater, and suddenly somebody opens a, 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 a bag of Cracker Jack or chips. You get this. What happened? <laughs> no? So we, we, to concentrate on the beautiful music, you must not have any distraction. What they said now before the concert, Turn off your cell phone. Turn off your cell phone. Huh? Turn off your cell phone. Because no distraction, huh? concentration. Okay, the function of concentration. Huh? And <coughs> so, in fact, to be concentrated, you must control your emotion. And if you are, suppose you have a strong emotion and you want to study, first try to quiet, to become calm. We say never take a decision under emotion. Huh? Never take a decision. Oh. Oh, that, that is the most beautiful wife. I, I think it's the wife of my life. Okay, we marry in, in, next week. Wait a minute. Take six months. Huh? <laughs> Not six years, but at least six months. Huh? Fian, huh? You know, sometimes people are so enthusiastic. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Huh? Because a passion, a, a, a emotion can blind your judgment. Huh? Can blind your judgment. Okay. Page 21. Um, necessity for healthy and emotion. Uh, to be in good health, we know we need to have good emotion. A good emotion, for example, to laugh. Huh? To laugh is a good emotion. Huh? To smile. Or to be happy with some people, huh? with someone, we take a good meal together, you know. That is necessary. It is a necessity to have good emotion. We cannot live only with bad emotion. We need good emotion. We need leisure. We need vacation. We need to contemplate the nature, etc. It's not a waste of time. It is necessary for our balance. Huh? Huh? Uh, sport, play, leisure, you know, etc. You read that by yourself. In, <coughs> in fact, all that huh, is always linked with the integrality of the human person. We are one. We cannot separate. Okay, we study emotion apart of uh, intellection and volition, but all that is and limb continually. My, my, my will, when I decide something, I cannot also be out of any emotion. If I decide something difficult, immediately my emotion will say, hey, you need, <laughs> you need a courage, you, know, you need audacity. We are not pure in general, and we must be aware of that. So it is important for teaching, for preaching, for praying, for liturgy. Uh, uh, all that is one. We cannot, for example, pray only <coughs> with our mind, our will. Today is the feast of Saint Margaret Mary Anacot. What is the message? Of the Sacred heart of Jesus. What is the heart? <coughs> the center of emotion. emotion. It was a reaction against Jansenism. Jansenism. Jansenism, they consider emotion, all that as something evil. 
Huh? Like in the Babbit feast. The same thing. So, I have, I have, but there is no, I want you to see that. Emotions are part of our person. Huh? So I pray, I pray with my own person, including my heart. And Jesus appeared on uh, he gave the message of the sacred heart. It was the first time in the history of the church Jesus manifested him as a sacred heart. The first time. <laughs> that is interesting because the heart is provo it, it is we call, we consider the heart as the center of emotion. Jesus wants to be loved, not only to be known by intellect, by theologian, he wants to be loved. Interesting. Huh? Emotion, sentiasis of Loyola. I said that huh? when you study the you make these spiritual exercises. Huh? When you meditate on the Bible, the Gospel, you have to try to communicate uh, to your senses to what happened, to have the emotion of what the people are there. The emotion of Mary when the and Gabriel uh, uh, spoke to Mary. The emotion of Mary Magdalene when she went to the tomb and she did not see her, Jesus. No? And when Jesus said, Mary Rabboni, you know, if you meditate like that with your not only your mind but your heart also mm -hmm. your heart. and when you preach when you teach mm -hmm. the catechism mm -hmm. you teach only to memorize but have to move because many times we learn more through our heart than through our reason we say in french le coeur a des raisons que la raison n'a pas the heart of reason that reason does not have in many people they will be moved more by heart by emotion to God than by reasoning. You can give them the five proof of St. Thomas that will, uh, that will not move them at all. You can present the crucifix with the blood of Jesus and they say, oh, and they are moved. So we more do no, no, no thing. Huh? Not only we, we teach, we preach to the mind, we have to work to the heart. Huh? Emotion, very important. Now, uh, the phenomenon of humor. Father um, Leishman study here a phenomenon that proves we are one uh, mind and body because in humor, the body is participating. When you laugh, when you smile, you smile with your body. But you smile, you laugh because you understand. So you have an insight of something incongruous. Uh, sent, uh, Saint uh, Philip of Neri was asked by the, the Pope to become uh, a cardinal. <coughs> Any time the Pope asked Philip, and Philip of Neri did not want to become a cardinal. So what he did a uh, day, he was like our brother with the beard. Huh? Yeah. He cut the half of his beard. The other was there, and when the Holy <laughs> City knew that Philip of Neri cut his beard, he said, oh, no more cardinal. <laughs> Finish. He has the sense of humor. He, he likes to make joy, to make joke, huh? to provoke laughing. Huh? It's not a sin to laugh. <laughs> it's a proof of intelligence. Saint Thomas More, before being huh? beheading, what he said, he said to the executioner, "Take <coughs> care of my beard. It is I beg, I have a great importance to my beard." And he took his. <coughs> but it's wanted to give all the money to the executioner. <coughs> the sense of humor. For me, it is a, when I see a seminarian with a sense of humor, I'm sure he would be, he had, he <coughs> would be a good priest. A good priest. Sociability, sense of humor. <coughs> to be a social worker, to be a nurse, to be a doctor, to be a teacher, to be a priest, he must have the sense of humor. We must not take everything in a tragic way. Uh, we must say, a relative, uh, say well, don't uh, take your time, quiet a little bit. Find what is funny, even to be able to laugh at yourself. Laugh at yourself. You make a mistake instead of, uh, don't laugh at me. You make it, I, I, I gave an example, maybe I told that. The first year I taught here, I was not very good in English. I'm not very good in English, I know. But anyway. <laughs> I, I said to the student, take your shit and write on them. <laughs> 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 so the student looked at me, laughed. I didn't say, 
No one laughs at me. No, I laugh. You know, it's funny. I, I, I make a mistake. You know, I must recognize. I make uh, my sister. She said, huh? "There's no embrace." Huh? I have many men. She said, "No, no, no, no." Oh, I stole in Barazada. But we have to laugh. It is important to have the sense of humor. Uh, John the Twenty Third had a great sense of humor. Huh? He said at night before, he said, ah, we can sleep as a pope. We have so many problems. Oh, he said, you know, when I, say, I go to bed, I say, Jesus, it is your church. Take care of her, and I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that is important. But John Paul II had a good sense of humor. Huh? Oh, yeah. Francis a good sense of humor. Huh? He can make joke. He make joke about mother-in-law. Huh? <laughs> you know, that is important for teaching, for preaching. Uh, if you are always serious, never. You know, somebody, they are scandalized when people laugh in the church. We shouldn't laugh in the church. Yes, Jesus laughed. He was intelligent, the most intelligent man on earth. I'm sure he when, the, when the Saint Joseph make a mistake, he laughed. He laughed. Mary, uh, it was uh, sometimes maybe she, she cooked, uh, she, uh, maybe it was not always perfect. Because an accident happened even to Mary, I had a cook. We must take, like now, it's very, very important. Otherwise, you will make people non happy and you will be not happy. The sense of humor, very, very important for a teacher, for a priest, or for a seminarian. Okay? So you can read that by yourself, it's not very difficult. He explained how we can have humor because we are intelligent and we see what is incongruous, you know, what is not correct in the reality, the <coughs> event, and that provokes some laughing, some smiling. That is a proof, another proof, that we are one, huh? we are united, okay? So you leave that. On page 27, <laughs> so I spoke about that, huh? the, the, the sense of humor, and number 12, I think that the remark of Father uh, Reichman is very important, number 12. Humor reveals itself as a corollary of an ontological humility. <laughs> uh, that means I am humble by my own being. Because my being is limited, is imperfect, it's normal that I made some mistake. Huh? I, because I can make some mistake, I can also laugh at that. Of course, uh, if you make a big mistake, if, uh, you, you, you break uh, 25 uh, cups and glasses, but you can laugh, yes, but it's better not to laugh too much in front of the bursar. Huh? <laughs> but you know, <laughs> <laughs> the sense of humor is so important. You know, we, we retain what you, know, you, you make a homily, you, 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 you teach, you preach. The people outside, they will speak about what? The joke you did. No? Suppose the priest make a joke, the people will forget the rest, they will retain the joke. So jokes are very important in homily. We forget many things, we, re we retain what is humor, good humor. I told you, maybe if we finish by that, uh, I attend Obelis sermon from the age of five to the age of uh, to now. <laughs> but, uh, 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 I was I read only one one sermon. Zacchaeus, I told that to you. It was the church was filled with children on Friday, Good Friday, girls on side, huge church of the Jesuit, and he invited an oblate to preach, and the oblate preached about Zacchaeus. He said, you know, Zacchaeus was a young, a, old, a, a, a short man, but he had a big belly. Mm -hmm. So he wanted he want to climb in the tree, he put his belly like that, mm -hmm. and he climbed with the sycamore. It is what I retain from the room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is important, don't forget. People will attach men much importance to you if you have the sense of humor. So put some, a little bit of pepper on your, <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Somebody